Aloha from Oahu and the Hawaiian State Capital of Honolulu, where the Neil S. Blaze Dell Arena is playing host to a special night of Bellator MMA action build as Fight for Our Heroes, where we honor America's military first responders and frontline workers and the king. Well, we will definitely determine the queen of the flyweight division later tonight. Our esteemed guest for Bellator 278 will witness the second title defense for undefeated 125-pound champion Juliana Velasquez, the challenger. U.S. Marine veteran Liz Carmouche seeks her fourth straight Bellator win in her fourth shot at a major MMA championship. As for the rest of the main card, it includes two wild card bouts where the winners will advance to the opening round of the eight-man $1 million Bantamweight World Grand Prix. Well, here in the 808, eight fights comprise tonight's Fight for Our Heroes card. The first of three prelim bouts pits Makoa Parker against Blake Perry in welterweight action alongside former police officer Big John McCarthy. I'm Moro Ranallo, and we are set for our opening contest. Let's go to the tale of the tape. Man, 1-0 against pro debut, 21 years of age for Makoa Cooper. Comes from a fighting lineage. We're going to have a great start to this event. Let's go to the maestro on the microphone, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you as Bellator 278 kicks off the prelims tonight. Bellator MMA fight for our heroes. As we get the action underway, we'll do it now with three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing the blue corner first at six foot three, weighing in 169.8 pounds. Tonight, the senior airman, U.S. Air Force, makes his professional MMA debut, formerly stationed here in Hawaii, now in California. He fights out of Jefferson, Ohio, presenting Blake Perry. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot nine, weighing in 169 pounds even as a professional. He's one and oh, he fights out of Pearl City, Hawaii, introducing Makoa Cooper. And the referee in charge, Dana Furuta. It's a night in which we honor those who serve, and we are serving up an ready. evening of Bellator MMA, the return to the rock, the return to Hawaii, and it is the professional MMA debut of Blake Perry. He's in the blue gloves. He says he's honored to represent the United States Air Force on a world stage like Bellator. He's been preparing for this since he was 12 years old. Meanwhile, Makoa Cooper, his professional debut lasted all of nine seconds, recording a knockout over Ratavius Williams. So both of them making their Bellator MMA debuts, John, and both of them searching for the advantage. Blake Perry shoots for the takedown, well defended by Cooper. Nicely defended by Cooper. Good hips. You see heavy on top now, putting Blake Perry in a position where he does not have that half guard. He doesn't like the position he's at. Look at McCoy Cooper comes from a lineage of guys that have power. His brother, Ray Brada Cooper III, is the PFL welterweight champion because he's got bombs in his hands and mccullough has got the same thing so blake wants to be protecting himself well here this is not a good position to start the fight family that fights together sticks together cooper's head coach is his dad ray cooper jr his other brothers blake and balen also training partners as cooper has neutralized perry perry trying to get active off his back using the fence trying to escape Nice, calm, relaxed position for Cooper. He's not fighting that hard. He's just controlling with good pressure. Not squeezing, not burning any energy. Cooper making his Bellator MMA debut while Perry is making his professional mixed martial, martial arts debut. Very apropos that a guy that is serving the United States military as an Air Forceman 
is in the cage to be able to show everyone what he can do on this night. And he is trying to stay active from his back with Cooper on top of him. When you got a guy that's got really long limbs, you got to be careful. McCullough Cooper's doing a very nice job of controlling those limbs, seeing the attempts to bring the legs up, stopping all of that. Perry was a collegiate wrestler in Cleveland, Ohio. Very clean elbow right there, Morrow. It's a lot of power when you slide that hand off, bringing that elbow in. And now Cooper maintaining top position. Passing to side control. Very nice pass. Very clean, well timed. Under two minutes left in the opening round, Makoa Cooper controlling from top position and reining in those elbows that you've mentioned, John. Boy, and Blake Perry really trying to get to his side. It was really a smart move. That's what he should have done. But McCoy just stopping everything that he's trying right now. He's got a very nice Americana here. He just doesn't have his hand set in the place where he wants to bring his elbow to the offside of his head. If he does that, he can make that work. 21-year-old Cooper. Very calm, cool, and collected in controlling Blake Perry, the 27-year-old. Right hands into the hammer fist from the Cooper. Perry staying active from his back, trying to thwart Cooper's advancement. And you know that McCoy Cooper, look, he's training with his brothers, his dad. His brother is dominating in the top position, ground and pound wise, knows how to bring power, and you know that he's taught his brother how to do the same. Cooper feeds Perry a few more right hands, and it's been those bursts of strikes from top position and the control of Makoa Cooper that has been the story of the opening five minutes for our opening contest here in Bellator MMA's return to Hawaii. Time, guys, time. This is the start right here. You saw Blake Perry shooting for that takedown. Nice hips and sprawl by McCoy Cooper, and then he just turns over on him. And from this point, he was in the top position for the rest of the round. Landed some good shots. Blake Perry did a nice job of defending himself throughout, but was unable to ever get anything going. McCoy Cooper just controlling the entire round. Ready, ready, fight. Bell round two, Blake Perry told us that he wanted to drag Cooper into deep waters and finish the fight off of openings when Cooper is tired. Well, after wearing Cooper like a weighted blanket for most of the opening round, it, it is Blake Perry's conditioning that is already being tested. You can see if there's a little bit of a change of game plan, because obviously Blake Perry thought he would be able to get the takedown, get to the top position. That didn't happen. So we'll see if he tries to maybe keep it on the feet right now. Usually a weighted blanket is comfortable. I don't think there was anything there was no comfortable comfort in that. for what Blake Perry had to endure in the opening round. But like you said, did well defensively and now will have to go back to the well as he's taken down again. 
by Makoa Cooper here early in round two. Very early in Makoa Cooper getting that takedown easy. There was no energy you know, put out to get that. Here come the elbows. Nice job by Blake to use his legs, get some distance on that. But he's trying to pull McCoy Cooper into that triangle position. McCoy knows exactly what he's trying to do. Slides his head right out. Very nice pass. Notice he's controlling the legs, keeping that leg over the top. That makes it very difficult for Blake to swing his hips around. Yeah, methodical, mature attack for a guy who's just 21 in his second professional fight. You just said it exactly, Mauro. 21 years of age and showing you he is in a very good fight, but he's just dominating the action, knowing exactly what he needs to do, when he needs to do it. Beautiful pass to side yeah, control. Yeah, and not panicking and, and, like you say, turning it into a guard pass. Yeah, and, you know, this is where, you know, young fighters, they, they sometimes get in that position, they think they got to end the fight fast. You don't. You have time. The, the end will come if you do the right things, and that's what and McCoy he is doing. Neutralizes the left He's arm done. of Perry. Yeah, you're looking at a crucifix position now. Well, Terry is able to get that. Now it is. Yep. And uh, well, BJ Penn, <laughs> the Leo Wyatt native knows a thing or two about the crucifix position, and Makoa Cooper <laughs> trying to vanquish a game Blake Perry here in the second round. Watch your toes, watch your toes, watch your toes. Referee warning Perry not to use his toes to grab onto the fence. He can't control his position with his toes. He can keep his feet on the fence. He just can't control his position. Nice. And blood right hand. now flowing from the face of Blake Perry, who's taken some nasty elbow strikes and some nasty strikes in general. That right hand is proven to be the money shot for Makoa Cooper. And there's a knee and another knee. And the level change in Makoa Cooper all over Perry. Yeah, McCoy got stuck on that. He made a little bit of a mistake on that attempt to take down. Got a little bit too low on it. Got his arm on the offside. But he's still in control of the situation. And Perry proudly wearing a crimson mask in his professional MMA debut and still very active trying to tame the beast that has been Makoa Cooper. And the patient. Performance of Makoa Cooper, who was beating up Blake Perry, bloodying him. And yet, not able to extinguish the fighting spirit of Perry just yet. Oh, nice job by Ben Perry, though. Escape. And there you go. Anything can happen in mixed martial arts. And just like that, Blake Perry with an incredible reversal of fortune. Right now, it's deep, and it you gotta be very careful, you're McCoy. Get on top, it's still gonna be a pressure. He's trying to hold on to that dart, that anaconda. It's, and he wants to control that leg. Nice job by McCoy. Slip through, but that is still tight. Second of that fight was being won by Makoa Cooper. But this is this is what makes the sport what it is, Moro. All it takes is one mistake, you catch it, it's over. High drama to begin our proceedings here in Hawaii. And Blake Perry will now wear that cut as a well, a vestige of honor after what he went through here in his professional mixed martial arts debut. And that was a beautiful start to the round by Makoa Cooper. A beautiful takedown with the double leg. He was pounding on Blake Perry. Blake Perry at times looking like, you know, he's getting tired, having nothing but problems, getting dominated in all the positions. But here was the mistake. You see him, he leaves his neck out there, and then he switches it from a guillotine into an anaconda. And when he's got that right now, there's a lot of pressure there. McCoy's trying to keep that space. He was unable to, he turns over, but still in the top position. That's still locked on. You see him extend and pull him over. It's tight on the one side of his neck. The other is his own arm. 
Beautiful job by Blake Perry to believe in your skills, stick with it, and pull out a come from behind win. Look at that right there. Beautiful. That is tight right now. Step aside, Lazarus. Blake Perry with a comeback for the ages. And what a slick submission. Putting an exclamation point on the proceedings with an Anaconda choke victory in his first fight under the bright lights. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end officially. Four minutes, 14 seconds, round number two. The winner by submission via Anaconda choke. Now undefeated as a professional blade. Blake Perry stationed for three years in Hawaii. It's where he began his mixed martial arts journey, and it's where he records a memorable victory in his first fight as a professional mixed martial artist. Let's go to Amanda Guerra at the Fight Desk. Moro, thank you so much. Amanda Guerra, Josh Thompson here on the Fight Desk with you. Josh, you look so nice tonight. You look very handsome in your Hawaiian. You look beautiful as well. A, a little bit of move from what we normally yes. wear. <laughs> uh, but that is why we are excited to be here in Hawaii. Look, tonight is just part one of two nights here in Honolulu. It is going to be absolutely spectacular tonight. The Women's Flyweight Championship is on the line. We get to find out the final two fighters that make it to the Bantamweight Grand Prix. That kicks off tomorrow. How how excited are you? I cannot wait because the, this will dictate who they're going to fight into that World Grand Prix. And I'm telling you right now, the guys that are there waiting is going to be extraordinary fun. They are all studs. Let's talk about the woman we get to see tonight, the Flyweight World Championship, Marine Liz Carmouche. She has gone after that belt three times in her career. It has eluded her thus far. She is going up against the champ, undefeated Juliana Velasquez. How tight is this fight going to be? It's going to be a very tough fight for both of them because both of them are so well-rounded. With Juliana Velasquez, she's on the national team for judo. She's fallen in love with her stand-up. She's very hard to take down, but off of her back, she, there's a little bit of threads there in terms of when she's on her back. With Liz Carmouche, she is one of those well-rounded fighters all the way around. She's good on the feet, as we found out in her last fight. She's got big power against Watanabe, knocking her out. And then the same thing when she fought Deanna Bennett with the submissions. She can wrestle, she can grapple, and she can strike. So this is going to be a great fight. Fights evenly matched. The only thing that really I think is going to be different is the size. Juliana Velasquez is a little bit longer, a little bit taller, so she's got to use that weight and that size. I, no, I shouldn't say weight, but that size to press Liz around. Hopefully. Yeah. I, I just want to say this is a stacked main card. It is so stacked. We only have a couple prelims left before we get to it. The prelims have been great thus far. All right. Tonight is Bellator's Fight for Our Heroes event. It is free for active military veterans and first responders. We want to thank the USO for what they do to try to bring a little bit of home to those that serve in our country. It's not easy for troops to be away. If you would like to find out how you can help, go to uso.org slash Bellator. And down tomorrow to continue the prelims. Thank you very much, Amanda. We continue with action at 170. Both Dante Skiro and Scotty Aho looking to bounce back from L's in their respect to Bellator MMA debuts. Here are the numbers. Not much of a difference here. 73 inch reach for Skiro. Scotty's the guy that likes to stand and bang. Skiro's the guy that likes to get to the ground. We're going to see who gets it where they want it to be. Let's get it to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here at Blaisdell, we'll go now to the welterweight division as we're set for three five minute rounds as we welcome those joining us live on YouTube at Bellator MMA and Showtime Sports. We'll go now first to the blue corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 170 pounds even. His professional record, five wins, three losses. He fights out of Kailua, Kona, Hawaii, presenting Scotty Hau. And across the cage is adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot one weighing in 170.6 pounds as a professional eight victories with three defeats fighting out of madison wisconsin presenting dante skiro in charge your referee chris west
Giro coming off a split decision loss to Logan Storley in his Bellator debut in August of last year. Scotty Ahu. He is 0-1 in Bellator, but is coming off a victory over Timothy Teves back in March of 2020. So both of them have been outside of the cage for a lengthy period of time, and, and both of them, of course, looking to get back on the winning track. What do you look for early, John, as Skiro attacking the leg of Ahu early? I look for Dante Skiro to look for those opportunities for him to take Scotty Ahu to the ground because that's where he is best. He already he proved that when he went against Logan Storley, how clean his jujitsu is. He's a good wrestler, but Scotty's got big bombs in his hands. You can only stand with him for so long before he's going to touch you with one of them. Skiro eight and three, four knockouts, three submissions. Ahu five and three with one knockout and three submissions. Skiro began wrestling in the eighth grade, wrestled and played soccer for two years at UW Whitewater, and he admitted, of course, against a guy like Logan Storley, he says, hey, plain and simple, I got out wrestled, but boy, did he give Storley a fight. Boy, he did. I mean, at the, yes, he got out wrestled, but jujitsu-wise, he kept himself very safe throughout the fight, which showed his skill level and he is just a good all-around fighter. And of course, Storley will now get the biggest opportunity of his career in London against Michael Venom Page on Friday, May 13th, as Ahu and Skiro fight for positioning along the fence. Skiro with the back take now. Scotty Ahu was talking about he's been working on his wrestling intensely. He says, it's always been my problem. It's not gonna be my problem anymore. And you can see right now, he's doing good work up in the clinch. At times, opening up for strikes. This is all good work by Ahu. Ahu with hammer fist to the right leg of Skiro. Two minutes elapsed here in the opening round, and Skiro immediately attacking the neck, looking for the guillotine choke. Scotty needs to be careful right now with his neck. He needs to get his head up higher. He's not good if his head gets pushed down. As I'm saying, he's going to end up getting neat. Skiro with three submissions, including two guillotine choke victories, but Ahu escapes and has Skiro long the fence. And they separate, and Ahu says, meet me in the middle. Midway point of the opening round. I get the feeling that Ahu wants to stand and bang. No, he's never had a problem with standing in the middle and throwing his hands. That is where he has made his bread and butter. Skiro's a guy who's got good technique, but he's going to be best in trying to get into that wrestling game and get this fight to the ground. Skiro not being baited into a brawl, though he's the first to deliver a combination. This is with the kick. At times, though, when you're watching Skiro throw, his oh, hands nice. are starting to sink down. Sharp there's jab. There's an opening. Him. Scotty Ahu just showing exactly the way the Hawaiians believe I was say, be. It's in the Hawaiian oh. DNA, but Skiro with the knee right up the middle connects on that tough Hawaiian jaw. Scotty Ahu. Clean and shot Almost an oh, oh moment. And the lead left hook and right hand, and Skiro's had some success in the striking department, and one of the reasons Ahu then crushes his face looking for the takedown. He ate that knee. That was a solid knee, and he just ate it. He continues to go to the leg with the uh, hammer fist. The hammer fist, a lot of people are looking at it and oh, it's nothing good. Let someone hit you with a <laughs> hammer fist multiple and times. It will affect your quad. Skiro going again for the guillotine choke. Coming up on the final minute of the first round, two of his three submissions have been via this if Ahu, form of choke. If Ahu can take and wrap that right leg, he can bring him backside on that takedown. He uses his head as a third arm to push that Leverage point over. Pummeling by Skiro, trying to create some separation and opportunity to get his back off the fence. Knee up the middle again, and he's had success with the knee, and there's an elbow over the top by Skiro that scored. Beautiful exit. That's what you're always looking for. When you get in those clinch situations, you look for a guy that's going to exit and land, making his opponent pay for that clinch situation. Nice kick up high by Dante Skiro. And there's a nice left hook that landed for Scotty Ahu. And Ahu going to the body with a one-two from the southpaw stance. 
good action in the opening five minutes between Dante Skiro and Scotty Ahu, and Skiro going again for the guillotine, but the clock will run out in the first five. Focus on breathing. You can lean forward a little bit. Yep, focus on recovery. Yep, hey, so. We got, we got to prioritize the pummel as we're getting to the fence, right? Yeah, I know, but you're letting him get under and you're letting him get that head position. I want head position on his chin, and I want you winning the... Skiro coming after him. This is, I believe, where he lands the knee. Beautiful knee right there. Scotty, Scotty out just takes these shots, man. It shows how tough he is in the stand-up game. And then he lands a nice, clean left hand there. Comes after him. Skiro being very cautious with his defense. Good first round. Skiro had a great grandpa, uncles who have all served in the military. As we honor those who serve with our fight for our heroes card here tonight. Neil S. Blaisdell Arena in Honolulu, Hawaii, the second of three scheduled rounds at welterweight. How do you have it on your unofficial scorecard after the first frame and why, sir? Look, it was a close round. And there was a lot of good things done by Scotty Ahu, but you got to give it to Dante. He landed that big knee, the elbow strikes. Those things count. Skiro becoming more loose and fluid with his striking jumps as Ahu comes back with a left, going to the body. Skiro's been very successful with that leg kick. He should go back to it. He's been landing it, landing it with a lot of power. Each time he does it, you can see that Scotty is eating it, but it is affecting him. Skiro at team elevation out of Denver, Colorado. Ahu, boss MMA. Lua Kona, Hawaii is where Hahu is representing and coming forward. Making Skiro adjust, but Skiro continues to land kicks and then a jumping knee and Ahu backs him up in defense. But it's Skiro controlling. One of the things that Skiro's corner talked to him at the break was, hey, you're getting into that clinch, but you're not putting your head in the right position. You're allowing him to control head position and everything. You cannot allow that to happen. Yeah, wanted to make pummeling a priority. No opportunity there as it was Ahu going upstairs with a head kick. Right uppercut, left hook combination by Skiro. And again, going for the choke. He can lock this into a front naked choke. He's going back to the guillotine. Pulling that up, that's tight. That's why he rolled right out. The movement of Ahu told you how tight that was. That's why he gave up position. It was his only way to survive in the fight. Ahu has been submitted once. That was in his loss in his first fight in Bellator against Keone Diggs via rear naked choke as Skiro looking to improve position. Looking to improve position because he's got an arm triangle right now. Uh, nice job by Ahu to get his arm back. Skiro keeps on moving. Roll he out. Belly all the way to mount here. Full mount. Almost. And beautifully done by Dante Skiro. Beautiful pressure by Skiro. Firmly in control here from the pressure. Beautiful baseball bat choke right now. Putting a lot of pressure there. Can't tell if he switched to the Darsh. Two minutes left in the second round. And meanwhile, for Ahu, cannot accept this position. Some beautiful elbow. posture and some distance and some nasty strikes from Dante Skiro continues to try to maneuver and navigate a potential opening for another submission attempt. Take a look at the posture of Skiro. Everything he's throwing has power on him. Putting that sweet right hand. He's crushing that space on Ahu right now. Hammer fist to the body. Looking for the Dars. He 
He has two guillotine chokes, one arm triangle choke under his belt and was threatening with the Darce and now threatening with more ground and pound posturing long distance strikes as Ahu working from the bottom. Yeah, he's looking towards that leg, but that is not, he doesn't have a position for it right at this second. And leaves himself open to strikes from Skiro. And that's the problem with the way Skiro's leg is, he's protecting, you see Ahu trying to extend and stretch him out, but he can't right now. Trying to get his legs involved. Skiro just crushes the position. Nice. Right back to the choke. That is tight right now. He's got a lot of pressure. Even if he rolls through this and gets to the top, that choke is going to maintain. You see Skiro trying to control that leg. A tight Tars choke being applied by Dante Skiro and Scotty Ahu fighting desperately to survive the last 20 seconds of the second round. A lot of pressure right now. You see him starting to wiggle that leg. Now that he controls the leg, that makes it even tighter as he starts to crush that diaphragm. And the escape and the force of Skiro letting go, and he put a lot of pressure but continues to go on the offense. And Dante Skiro threatening to stop Scotty Ahu, but the round is over. A lot to unpack in that second round, John. A lot of things happening in that second round. A lot of attacks by Dante Skiro. This was the choke, and this was tight. That's why you saw Scotty Al dropping down Ahu to having no way of getting out of that until he dropped. But then you saw Skiro dropping big bombs, big elbows. Look at the shots right there. Those are heavy. Punches opening up as he's going for the leg. He did not have the position to get that leg. Dante Skiro almost ending this fight near the end of the round. A big round for Dante Skiro. Skiro credited with landing 57% of the 100 strikes that he has thrown. Scotty Ahu credited with 24 of 42. So it's Dante Skiro's fight to lose heading into the third and final round, Big John. Right now, I have Dante Skiro winning 10-8 in the second round, so he's way ahead. Two, and a right uppercut left hook. Dante Skiro beginning to open up. Even as, as tough as Ahu is, you can only take so many shots before they start to slow you down, and he's starting to really slow down right now. And the jumping knee is Dante Skiro. Oh, he's in trouble. Ahu shoots for the takedown, the sprawl, and another submission attempt by Skiro. Yeah, he let go, of it. He's he let go on him. to top position. Heavy strikes by Dante Skiro. He is his ground and pound is just fantastic right now. Hammer fist from Skiro. Ahu has taken a lot of damage, struggling to survive here in the first minute of the final round. It may just be a matter of time before the referee steps in, and he does. Dante Skiro records an impressive victory to bounce back from the loss to Logan Storley, stopping Scotty Ahu in the third and final round to improve to 9-3, and 1-1 one and one inside the Bellator MMA cage. Smooth striking on display from Skiro. Yes, Beautiful job by Skiro. He looked systematically he broke him down, and then the submissions were a big part of it because yep. that left him open. When he decided to break off the submissions, he was going to huge elbow strikes on the ground. A lot of High damage. fight IQ on display from Dante Skiro in his second Bellator MMA fight. And Johnny was looking to add a little sizzle to the proceedings as well. He added a lot of sizzle. You take a look at what just occurred there. The knees with the elbows and the uppercuts going right into all types of submission attempts, baseball chokes, darts chokes, everything, and then just finishing it off with heavy ground and pound. Nice job by Dante Skiro. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes to an end officially. One minute, three seconds. Round number three, the winner by TKO Dante Skiro. 
All right, his last four wins have come inside the distance. Impressive victory for Dante Skiro. Let's go to Amanda Guerra. Moro, thank you so much. Well, as we mentioned, we have two incredible fight nights here at Bellator in Honolulu. But we do have tomorrow night launching the Bellator Bantamweight World Grand Prix. But tonight, Joshua, we get the wild card round of that. The final two fighters who are going to punch their ticket tonight. We get Enrique Barzola going up against Nikita Mikhailov. And also, we have Jornel Lugo, Danny Sabatello, and I want to talk about that one because the beef between these two guys has been phenomenal this week. Yeah, it's been great all week. It's been the highlight of the week, to be honest. I mean, realistically, Danny Sabatello's just been relentless on the aggressive attacks with the words. But guess what? That's what makes this fun because they actually get to get in the cage and punch each other in the face to find out who's going to get the win. Just about 25 minutes until that main card kicks off. Uh, get on your little social media and check it out. For now, Moro, back down to you. All right, thank you very much, Amanda. Featherweight action, Weber Almeida against Fabricio Franco. Both of them looking to bounce back from losses. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll conclude the prelims here. Bellator 278 with three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing the blue corner at 5'10", weighing in 145.6 pounds. He is professional record 8 and 4, fighting out of Miami, Florida, Fabricio Franco. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at five foot seven, weighing in 145.2 pounds as a professional. Five victories, one defeat from Cuyaba, Mato Grosso, Brazil, presenting Weber, the Silverback Almeida. In charge, your referee, Chris West. Weber Almeida coming off the first loss of his career against Johnny Soto at Bellator 258 in May of last year via unanimous decision. Fabricio Franco looking to bounce back from a loss to Miguel Villegas in September of last year as he was outpointed in that contest as Almeida immediately attacking the lead leg of Franco in the first few seconds of the opening round. So Almeida definitely exploding out of his Area of the cage, John, with a sense of purpose, knowing that, okay, the pressure's off, the perfect record is gone, and it's time to get back to business. Look, I think you learned something from that loss. No one wants the loss, but you know, when you go out and you have that explosive energy that he has, and you hurt someone, you go after him, if you don't put him away, they can come back in the fight, and that's what happened. Almeida's got power. He's got that Machida-style karate that he uses. Very strong, very explosive. His first five fights ended thanks to that power. Five and one with five knockouts. Fabricio Franco, he is eight and four with one no contest. He possesses some pop with six knockouts. His last knockout came in May of 2019 using kicks and punches to dispose of his opponent. Neither of these men are guys that like to actually take the fight to the ground. They both like that was a bit south of the border. Both these guys like to fight in the stand-up position. Almeida will get up to five minutes to recover. Mentioned Almeida, Machida Karate Black Belt and also a kickboxing black belt, was a six-time Brazilian national karate champion. Now, Meta said he was going to put together different combinations in this fight, use different footwork in his footwork, serving them well early as a body kick from a Franco. Made a lot of games. Both here. guys throwing a lot of face trying yeah. to get the counter attacks nice. going. They can't get the through chest, right, the fight. John, the high it. speed chest that is MMA. You set it up, you give them that faint, hoping that they're going to try to throw something back. Oh, and there's that was a clean shot by Almeida. Shot right by Almeida as Franco went for the head kick. Take a fist or straight up with your fingers. Three Blue. minutes left in the opening round. And Almeida, what a story. 
a professional musician. Watch your fingers, bro. Gives Lizzo a run for her money when it comes to playing the flute, I understand. <laughs> and that's saying some, because Lizzo is a fantastic flautist, but Fabrizio Franco, he wants to develop his own winning rhythm in this fight, and it's all about trying to set that rhythm right now, isn't it, John? Did you say flautist during a fight? Uh, flutist, flautist. Both are acceptable. <laughs> Weber Almeida right now really trying to pull Franco into biting on. You know what's sad? I don't have a lot of free time. <laughs> no, you don't. Really trying to get him to bite. Oh, going right now. The one thing about Weber, he needs to calm down because he's got power. And you don't have to try to knock someone out with every shot. Just touch your opponent. Oh. Five, 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 five. Coconuts keep getting over here, cracked here. Over here, over here, over here, over here. And it's Fabricio Franco who is in a world of hurt right now, thanks to this. Mm. Well, that sure looked like it landed on the thigh to me. I'd like to see that again. I could be wrong, but that seemed like the inside of the thigh or something. Whenever he's ready. Low. That's a clean kick. So if he's in pain, it's a scoring blow. That's a, this is the end of the fight. Let's be honest. Uh oh, John again. It's nice having you here. With us. That was a clean. Has it been ruled as of now? Uh, Obviously, the referee stopped, stopped and gave a time, it so saying that it was yep. a low blow. Low blow. It was not. That is not a low blow. No replay. Take a look. You can stop this right where you see this kick. That lands. On the inner part of the thigh, that is not a low blow. That is not a low blow. <laughs> this is why one of the big things that's been done lately. Take a look. Take a look at that. And you can see exactly where his cup is at. That is a clean shot. That is a shot that should win Weber Almeida this fight based upon what is occurring right now. You're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Franco was involved in one no contest that was back in August of 2016, but this one. Let's see another angle of this. I mean, you can stop it at it. You can see that is off of the thigh. I, I just don't know how let's go, let's go they're saying that this is a groin shot. This is what's wrong is if you can see where the referee is standing and he's standing that side so he, he really couldn't continue? see it. You don't want to continue? I don't want to lose this fight. But do you want to continue? Let's Making a mistake here. It's just somewhat. This is why you want to continue or we have what's called the RO now. Nevada is the, the state that started it. It the is the replay official and what they will do is that replay official is looking at this during this break continue or not. and he's notifying the referee. Well right now our referee Chris West isn't getting any information from anyone. He isn't even looking up at and normally I'll tell you hey cheat look up at those screens if they're there but he's getting no information. You can see the replay right now. That lands on the inner thigh. It does not land to the groin. I don't know what it is that Franco is feeling, but that's not an illegal blow. Yeah. Yeah. Image. Right now, he's right. saying what you're saying. Right. Referee Jason Herzog is trying to help his fellow yeah. official. And this is what we call a secondary referee in the fight. He's giving him information saying, hey, that was a clean blow. This guy cannot hey, go on in the fight. Go. The fight is you gotta, over. You gotta pay attention to me. Coaches, listen up. Either you gotta continue, because they watch the replay, there's no foul. You're either gonna continue, listen to me, or, or the fight's gonna be done. What do you want me to do? You wanna continue? Or do you want me to stop it right, so right now? Right you got to make a decision over. right now. You don't ask the, you don't have to, he's sitting there making a decision. You, you want to stop it? I'm going to stop over. it. No, I mean, you don't want to lose the fight. Okay, do you want to fight or not? 
That's last he time. has no okay. business giving him anything. The man was not fouled. There is no way to give him more time. And there it is, John. It's over. Weber Almeida will return to the win column with a victory over Fabricio Franco. It will go down as a TKO triumph. Hopefully the MMA gods got it out of their system here on the premium. <laughs> <laughs> and wow, Weber yeah, Almeida wow, just found out he won. So he's now six and one, and his uh, knockout streak when it comes to wins continues, albeit this one a little it's a knockout. Knockout. It is. He landed the winning blow. It's just a low knockout. Yeah. Almeida promised to go for the knockout. Oh, 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 what's going on? And he's still feeling it. And uh, Michael C. Williams is going to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after the blow was determined to be a legal strike, referee Chris West waved off the contest officially three minutes, one second. For your winner, by TKO Weber. The seat of the pack, Almeida. Weber Almeida, the silverback. Hey, he's back in the win column. Let's go. Back I love you, man. To Amanda I love you, again. man. Mara, thank you so much. We do want to mention tonight's Bellator Fight for Our Heroes event. It is free to attend for active military veterans and first responders. We want to thank the USO for what they do to bring a little bit of home to those that serve our country. We know it is not easy for our troops to be away. If you would like to find out how you can help, go to uso.org slash Bellator. Amanda Garrett, Josh Thompson here to wrap things up on the fight desk for the prelims there. Very exciting and interesting way to end them. But we have a spectacular main card coming up tonight. Josh, you look great. I look very nice. But I want to pull up the main card so people at home can see what's going on because that is the main show we have coming up tonight. We have four guys trying to punch their ticket to the Bellator Bantamweight World Grand Prix. Josh, how tight are those fights going to be? Because it's hard to call winners there. They're going to be very tight fights. But they're going to be action packed. There's already been a lot of mudslinging back and forth. And like I said earlier, the great part about it all is they all get to get in the cage and punch each other in the face. But I'm really, <laughs> really excited for the main event. Yes, yeah, so we'll talk about our main event. We have the champ undefeated Juliana Velasquez going up against Liz Carmouche. We do want to mention Liz Carmouche uh, has been a Marine for five years. She has attempted to win the belt three times in her career. Josh, how does she try to get that done tonight? She's got to be calm, patient, but she's got to also let her hands fly. Main event. I told she's, it that's what we're so yeah, excited about, but that main car. She's she just got to let her hands fly. She can get out there, move her head offline, let her hands fly, get the takedown. She can dominate this fight. That's it for the prelims. We'll see you at 10 Eastern on Showtime. It's a Bellator two-night special event. Lights out. Tonight, undefeated champion Juliana Velasquez Whoa! takes on top contender Liz Carmouche. That is it! That is Saturday. Uh, legend Chris Cyborg is back. Cyborg starches Kavanaugh! Against Arlene Blenko, plus Archuleta versus Stunts and Mix versus Horaguchi in the Bantamweight World Grand Prix. Are you kidding me? All the action starts tonight at 10 and continues Saturday at 10.30 on Showtime.
dominating the position of where they're at. And there's the creating the separation and then delivering some strikes. Janae Harding before McCourt tries to close the gap again before eating these shots upstairs. Changes levels. Easily defended by Harding. Head kick by Janae Harding. And Harding now beginning to put it on McCourt. Yeah, McCourt's in trouble here with what we're seeing. I head there for Janae. That's why she ends up on top. Janae just needs to get heavy hips here, crush down on that leg. You see that leg that Leah McCord is using inside. Just press down heavy hips, and you can land a lot of big, heavy strikes right now. Ground and pound from Janae Harding, looking to maintain the position, dropping a couple of right hands. Now looking to go full mount. No half guard employed by McCord. McCord trying to control Harding's posture. Harding drops another left. McCord active on the bottom, but eating these shots. Yeah, McCord is not not reacting the way you, you want to see. Right now, she's starting to cover in this position. You can't cover, start to move your body. Make it to where she cannot hit you based upon your body position. McCord was stopped in her professional debut due to strikes has won four in a row since. Oh, beautiful up kick by Lee McCord. That landed. And of course, now the up kick leading into a potential triangle choke here by McCord. Of course, we remember our current middleweight champion, Gegard Musasi, with his up kick on Jacare in Japan. But McCord here with midway through the second has Harding in trouble. Yeah, the, right now, she just locked up the, that triangle. It's not quite tight right now as far as there is space, but we'll see if Janae Harding has enough to be able to stay with it. In trouble, there's a tap, and just like that, Leah McCord comes back to submit Janae Harding. Leah McCord pulls out the dramatic submission win. Irish boxer versus a fighter whose name is Anger Fist. I think you know what kind of fight we're going to get with this one. I do. Red gloves for Anger Fist. Blue gloves for one of Dublin's finest. And we should mention that Arlene Blenko is 2-0 since going to a new coach. Sean Sullivan and both those wins have been first round stoppages. She's very nice hands, a lot of faith in her boxing. She's having a lot of confidence, hands wandering very, very low. Well, Blenko says over time she's become way more comfortable on the ground. And she wants another fight against Julia Butt. Throws that right hand, it comes back quickly, right? Just like that. A good counter yep. by Blenko. Kavanaugh trying to work the body that left her in position for the counter. <laughs> Difficulty with working the body. Bloodied up a bit. Glenn <laughs> Cowley, 145, <laughs> under a minute remaining in the round. And you can see the size difference. Janet Kavanaugh, nice. very strong, very powerful. Blinko's had her moments, though, over the top. That right there, Jimmy, was a perfect example of how she brought her hand back. Exactly. My opinion, Kavanaugh landed the more significant punches, but a lot of times she was playing the outside, which a lot of judges give, you know, the person playing the center, the aggression points. And I thought Blenko finished the round strong. See the ebb and flow of the dance. As Kavanaugh leads, Blenko tries to counter, and sometimes see the counter of the counter by Kavanaugh. Ten years of boxing for Sinead Kavanaugh. Mentioned the boxing accolades of Blenko. Both women have a lot of boxing experience. Good counter right. And her money punch. And sometimes get that boxing mentality where you feel good, you have your hands, and but that's when you get hit. Correct. The one who breaks that rhythm often finds success. The one who changes it up. Blenko led with a right hand of her own, or Kavanaugh kind of baited Blenko in to make her start. When they shake their head, no, that means that hurts. <laughs> one minute remains. Featherweight fight. Oh, nice left. What did we say about that left hand? Kavanaugh's been throwing it. That was as good as any punch that's oh, been landed. And now she's wobbled. For the winner, by split decision, Arlene Anger Fist Blanco. Split decision victory for Anger Fist. It's Miller time. Blue gloves for Dakota. Red gloves for McFarland.
We're really interested to see how the the thoughts of the five five minute rounds affects Alima Lee McFarland's start. If she starts off aggressively, or she starts thinking about her gas tank. You don't want to think about that too early. Fowling, the aggressor here, trying to cut off the cage. Yep, nice tight combinations, good body shot, good knee. See, she's been putting in work with those hands. Alima Lay's professional MMA debut was a 10-second knockout. Those knees 